welcome back to my channel my name is much Pamba, and thank you for being here we are in the concluding part of my chartered accounting how to become becoming a chartered accountant with zimbabwe series and i just thought today i should come and talk to you about training in professional practice which is audit and training outside of professional practice which have uh being at uh, being uh trained at other firms that are not accounting firms that are not um that are not um audit firms so um i had once when i had finished my degree i went to to Zimra. i was working at Zimra, and um I, I sat down with this other manager there uh, he had uh qualified through one of the big four accounting firms and um, by that time i think zimmer was also contemplating becoming an accredited training office he wanted to do that because he was a qualified ca um and then he sent me down uh talking about um if you were to come back to work at zimmer or if you get a contract to work at a big four what would you what what should you choose and i thought i think that conversation that i that i had with him was also very instrumental in me choosing what i want to do and i have no regrets in the time in terms of what i am doing now so i thought i should just come also come and just give out this conversation just in case somebody is also trying to make a choice between uh training outside of professional practice and training in professional practice i hear that the terms were abolished and there's nothing called professional practice and outside professional practice anymore but for the purposes of this video that's what we're going to use so training in professional practice is auditing and training outside of professional practice is your usual working in a finance department at abcd other company that is not an audit firm advantages to each and every to both of them okay so i will start with training as a professional practice and then i'll also do um i'll also explain to you training in professional practice or i'll start with the similarities the similarities are in terms of exams you're expected to write the same exams in terms of pressure i have pressure and uh in terms of being in professional practice and my friends who are also outside professional practice were working at other companies so i will call audit firms firms and then i'll call other training offices that are not audit firms i'll just call them companies yeah so that we have that distinction right um in terms of pressure whether you're a firm or you're at a company the pressure is most likely going to be the same because articles by their nature they require you to be under so much pressure Precious make pressure makes diamonds. Hi, uh, but uh, then the other thing also the period that you take to qualify is most probably going to be the same. The upside of training outside professional practice at those companies is because be one the money. <laughs> I like money. The money is usually better in training in at the company than it is at the firm. But that is for the duration of your training. Usually after your training, things either equalize or things change. But for the duration of your training, it's easier. It's, well, I mean, there is more money there. Uh, a person at a, t at a company is probably earning two times the money that I'm earning in the firm. But you make it work, hey, you won't die. That's one they earn more money too in terms of financial reporting i go into a firm to audit but when you're in working in a company doing articles in a company you are actually doing the financial reporting and the financial management so you get so exposed to financial reporting and financial management the third thing is you become sort of like a specialized person in terms of um in terms of 
whatever company you're working at. So let's say it's a bank, you become you become like a guru in terms of banking and accounting for a bank, uh, something like that. You be, you are so you're exposed to one industry, so you get to become uh, a be acquainted with it more than a person who's doing all the research there for like three months, which is also tops downfall. You become um exposed to one industry when a person who is in tip is at a firm this first three months i'm at a manufacturing company the next i'm at a tire homes company the next i'm at a farming company the next i'm at a bank you like tip you get exposed to more industries than a top person gets exposed to then the other thing is also i, t- I feel like in terms of management and um so as a tip person, probably as a top person, uh, as you are qualifying, you are taking on the role, probably accountant, senior accountant, but in order, to, excuse John Birango, but in order, you get to be exposed in terms of your network to all those other people. So if you're in top, you're exposed to your probably your finance manager going forward. Uh, but for me, I'm dealing with the finance manager is my first point of call. I can literally go into the CEO's office. I'm writing reports to the audit squad. And every, so in terms of the people, the, the, the ranks of the people that I get exposed to, I feel like in tip, you get more exposed to a bit of more people and a bit of a better ranking people. So in terms of your network, you can always then diversify. It's very hard for you to say as an employee, of let's say Stan Big, you are going to talk to the FD or let's say the CEO. Like, what do you want? Like, let's say Zimra just going to the CG's office. Like, what do you want? But probably if you're an auditor, you can always have his audience because you have things to report to him, you have conversations that you need to have with him. So, in terms of that, I feel like cheap is better. And then I also feel like, in terms of the opportunities after qualifying, so in top, because you've been exposed to SM industry. Your opportunities are sort of a bit of rotate around that industry, but with tip you can literally go into any industry because you've been exposed to so many industries during your training and you can fit in there. I don't know if this makes sense, but yeah, but could tip guys the money. Oh, the money is low. So if you have a family and you want to qualify as a CA, also mobility. I feel like if you're in tip you're in auditing and if you want to then move around uh to go wherever else you can always go there because auditing is like a critical skill i don't know but this uk family recruiters are always looking for auditors you can always go outside of the country so i don't know guys if it's been meaningful but i feel like um somebody people who have asked me this i'm like people with families or people with with a bit advanced in their ages like 40s and stuff and i feel like it's best for you if you're going to do a chat chat, chat a, <laughs> going to try to become a chartered accountant and you have a family or you have a responsibility probably top is for you because even day we will all become children accountants and if you're really smart and play your cards right we'll also all be exposed to the same opportunities thank you for staying in the into this video this long um start off in the com- comment section if there's anything you want to know or reach out to me on my social media you're probably going to give me the next idea for my video so excuse me the takeaway so the takeaway from this video is that if you have a choice of whether you want to go to tip or top, I would go for tip for tip. I would go into an audit firm. But my boyfriend sitting right across me <laughs> would think that he would go to a top. But I mean it's all preference and all career goals. So ciao and I'll see you the next time.